fireman, and one-time chairmaker from the Lower East Side. There had never been anyone quite like William M. Tweed. Over six feet tall and nearly 300 pounds, he was surprisingly nimble and graceful on his feet. Caricatured by his Republican opponents as a vulgar, hard-drinking Irishman, he was, in fact, a fourth-generation Scots Protestant, unfailingly courteous and nearly teetotal. He was also a superb politician who took care of his mainly immigrant constituency, providing jobs for the unemployed, coal in winter, and orphanages, hospitals, and shelters for the poor. He was one of the first people for, who saw the power of mass politics in the cities. And for all his thievery, there was the recognition of mobilizing this mass of people to some political end. Um, I think he'd be rem he's not remembered for that. He's remembered for the $50 million that he stole, which if you wanted to get the equivalent today, multiply times 10. Accelerating New York's already explosive growth still further, Tweed and his associates brazenly siphoned off staggering sums from the hundreds of city projects under their control and helped robber barons like Jay Gould and Jim Fisk make off with still more. There were lucrative contracts for grateful builders who happily paid Tammany's leaders enormous cash kickbacks to get them. There were thousands of jobs for Tammany's loyal constituents who gratefully voted Tammany's leaders back in power. New York's upper classes, meanwhile, professed to be appalled, but quietly looked the other way as real estate values in the city skyrocketed. It all worked like a machine, a political machine, and no one knew how that machine worked better than William Tweed, who by 1870 had concentrated more power in himself than anyone in the city's history.